quick explanation of uh, what the heck I've done here. So we have these bars, and I need to basically inlay this bar into this. And so the, this bar is a little, little wider than this one, but that's okay. I'll grind it to the same width or just cut it later or something. Functionally, they're the same width, and that width is the width of this bar. So the pattern is going to be based on the width of this. The width of this is 1 and 15 sixteenths. And uh, I'm actually going to be trying this out on the pantograph just to make it a little slicker and eliminate a little of the hand fitting time. We'll see how that goes. It's not necessarily always faster to do things on a pantograph. Um, at any rate, we're going to be using a 2 to 1 ratio. So if this um, finished workpiece is two and fifth or one and fifth, 15 sixteenths tall the pattern needs to be three and seven eighths tall and if the puzzle joint is going to be one inch long in this piece then it needs to be two inches long in the pattern because everything is twice the size so I'm gonna make my pattern out of some of this thin pink g10 I haven't used in forever and uh, don't worry you can still have a pink g10 handle on your knife i have quarter inch stock too uh, i have measured out a line from the factory cut edge out to three and seven eighths so this inscribed it out long so i can just use this as a strip to make patterns out of and we're creating the um, female side here i've used some cardstock thin cardboard and uh, what i did was I marked it out an inch long from here to here, and then I added a half inch back here just for strength and like a clamping surface. But um, this will functionally not be part of the pattern. Um, so really the joint is an inch deep from up here to here. Well, two inches deep on the pattern, inch deep on the steel. Uh, then I've created features by using found objects such as a, a washer that's one inch um, outside diameter and uh, I'm tracing that then it'll be a half inch outside diameter on the finished piece is the ratio and uh, and then I made these little radii here the pantograph can cut those um, when it creates the other side of the pattern the positive it's going to need to get down in there and it can't do a point functionally I can get a smaller and smaller cutter but I only have cutters down to 5 64ths and those are super delicate so this being a 3 16th radius based on the end of this tool is going to become a 3 seconds radius in the finished piece and i have a 3 seconds end mill that i can get in there just as a finish pass just to get that little bit so this is just designed on two to one ratio using the cutters that i have styluses that i have and um i'm going to be doing you know the roughing work with like the bandsaw mill whatever just get me down close to the line and then I'll just, um, you know, put the pattern, the G10 pattern and the workpiece, clamp it up in the pantograph um, just to take some light finishing passes with a 3 16 end mill just to get everything down to a fit and then swap to a 3 seconds end mill just to get these small radii. Um, at any rate, now I can um, put this cardstock pattern, scribe it onto the G10, I cut the G10 out to make a pattern that looks like this. And then once I have this in G10, I'm gonna take that and scribe that onto the G10 and then create a male pattern piece uh, with a little extra tag back here to grab. And I'll cut a little bit, um, a little bit off the line. I'll try to cut it really close, but have it be a little bit of a file to fit, file to finish. Because if I can get this G10 pattern piece and this G10 pattern piece to fit fairly nicely by the time I shrink them um, to half the size, then they're going to fit awesome. And I don't even need it to fit that awesome because it's going to get forge welded. But the tighter the fit, the um, more skookum the weld. And uh, skookum is the word on this stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to be making G10 pattern pieces. I'll show you that later. Alrighty, so it's about an hour later on the same day, and uh, you can see here I've got two puzzle pieces of pink G10 that fit together pretty well.
not really any play in that bit. Tiny, tiny little bit, maybe about a thou or two of click. And it's it's definitely not perfect. There's some little little gaps you can see the light through pretty well here and there. But remember, this is double size, so any gap is going to shrink by half when this gets cut onto the actual steel pieces, and they're then going to be forge welded together, so it should be just excellent. I know this is a machine that we don't often get to, but uh, hopefully this video will remedy that a bit. Here I'm just doing some pattern work. I've decided to, just for fun and maybe for education, and who knows, maybe it'll actually turn out to be uh, the economical way of doing it. That's kind of the third consideration. Uh, we are gonna use the pantograph for milling steel on those uh, Damascus puzzle integrals. So what I've done is I created that pink pattern. The female is just sitting here, we're gonna clamp that up later, but right now we're gonna cut this male end and we're at a two to one ratio here on the arms. You can see I'm at the uh, two there with that line. There's one there too, and there's also one there that we adjust to. With everything at two to one, I've made sure that with the stylus touching the leading edge here, we are just contacting the leading edge of our um, tr tryout material. It's just 3 16 plexi. And then uh, we've come and spotted in this edge when I'm writing this edge of this pattern, I'm just on the edge of that material, and then also all the way around for here. There, we're just on the edge of that. So what we should be able to do is just trace the pattern here with this and have it always be contacting at least slightly a cut path here. And that'll give us our male puzzle piece and then I have another test block there to cut the female into. And uh, right now I'm starting out with a um, five thou oversized stylus just to do the roughing. And then I'll finish it out with a exactly 0.375 stylus. And we're cutting with a 3 16th cutter, 3 8 stylus um, because the, the stylus has to be two to one to the cutter as well. And then uh, we're going to swap out to a um, 3 16 stylus just to get into these little little curved bottoms here and uh, a 3 seconds cutter and just take a light finish pass. And then, uh, and then we'll see how, and then we'll do the same thing with the female piece and then we will see how the two fit together. They should fit together pretty darn close, and if they do, then that'll be proof that we are ready to take this to steel. So, let me mount this camera and uh, take a little video of some cutting here.
Well, let's see how it fits. Pretty good fit. Pretty good. I think there's a small issue of concentricity with a uh, a spindle bushing that I made though. I think I'm gonna try to make a better bushing because this fit was a little bit tighter even I think before I swapped to a, a bushing and the 3 seconds cutter, but even this would forge weld up no problem. So I'm gonna consider that a success. And uh, yeah, hopefully we just managed to cut all the steel without snapping a bunch of cutters. I had cut a proof of the pattern with the pantograph. What's handy about that too is that now I have some very nice scribing templates to scribe the pattern roughly onto the Damascus here. And you can see I've I've I drilled a hole here, drilled a smaller hole, smaller hole, and then just bandsawed up to and ground up to the line, but haven't fully taken the line anywhere. So now I can put these on the pantograph and just take a, a pretty small cut, really, all the way around uh, in, in multiple, multiple passes on each of these. And they should it should just trim them to fit each other nicely. We'll see. Uh, here's the uh, the male side of one of these, all nicely cut out with um, a nice sharp end mill giving this finish. So now we'll smack down the female pattern here and uh, have a go at cutting the other side of this joint. And really quick, I went back in and I cleaned the corners up with this little 3 30 seconds cutter just to get the inside radius a little better and this um, plexi tri pattern fits snugly on there so that's encouraging well we got this one to the point where it'll fit together not perfect a little bit more of a gap in the back but we'll sprinkle a little iron powder in there and or a 1080 powder and we'll get the other one fit up 
I'm probably going to do this one by just trying to not use the pantograph as much as possible. Because the pantograph did work on this, but um, those little 3 16 end mills just dole up pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to see how good I can do fitting the next one up without it. Well, I've done a bunch of work off camera. And uh, I fitted the one up by pantograph. And I fitted the second one up by um, just scribing the female onto the what would be the male part and then just fitting it by hand, grinding it. You can see it's not perfect, but it still presses on. And then uh, since that worked, I did the other bar on both ends. So now I have two double keyhole composites ready to weld and then I've made <clears throat> underneath them is a plate of 15 and 20 and I got another plate to put on top for gussets we're going to probably tack weld these a little very lightly with fusion tig then put the covers on clamp them down tack 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 and then full weld the seams and then also we're going to get we're going to stitch down the outside of that and the outside of that seam on both of these. And then they will be ready for um, heating up and forging solid. So I'll show you when I've done some of that. Here we are having completely prepped these work pieces. You can see here, there's a cross weld here and one here. And in both cases, the um, shorter end, i.e. the weld closer to the end, is away from the handle because that's the tip. And then this is the larger section that will carry the bolster and that is toward the handle. The handles both have cranked stubs for directionality, better control. Um, we've just got some fusion TIG all the way around and uh and then mig weld handles on for strength chamfered handle ends and these bad boys are ready to forge weld